That's okay. Hi. It works. It works well. I have the most precious commodity to give away for good questions. Two pairs of socks from Elastic. Yeah. So listen carefully. Uh, we're starting? OK. Hi. My name is Yuri. I hope you can hear me OK, both here and remote. Perfect. So where's my clicker? The future of MapLibre. I like MapLibre. I really kind of put some effort into it. And I think it's a wonderful proje project, so I want to advertise it as much as possible. So what is MapLibre? How many of you do not know what it is? Three people. Wow. Impressed. I'm like, I'm almost ready to just, you know, throw in a towel and go because, I mean, like, what's the point? I'll try to be, go in depth then. So we develop free and open source software. That's the whole idea of, of MapLibre. To build tools to go all the way from the raw data to map visualization. Map visualization is the core feature. It's the core product, if you will, library, to make it possible for everyone to do it. To do all the interactions, all the user interface, all the little corner cases that we all get when we develop maps. It became as a fork of Mapbox GLGS and kind of grew from there. First, it was Mapbox GLGS. Initially, we even thought of calling it Map, MapLibre GLGS. But then it's like a you know, one trick pony, and then we cannot grow. So we called it MapLibre. It's JavaScript, and now it's, there's a native component in C++. Uh, that we all love and um, allows you to, do, uh, to build maps for Android, iOS, and other platforms. There's now, I'll get to that later. MapLibre, so it's an open com source community project. It's governed by the open source community. I, s I was one of the founders of the project. And yesterday I was actually officially elected as one of the board members, as well as some of the original board members, which means now I have more or less not a self-appointed role, which are always fun, but a community decided that, yes, I should continue messing things up the way I did before. I'm very happy to oblige. It's BSD licensed. It's developed by companies and enthusiasts. And we take donations, and then we give grants. We, board is not paid, uh, so don't look at me. We give grants for wonderful features, for just diligent work to, to do all the like, issue sorting and dealing with them and whatever. So there's, there's some grants to give. The history, MapLibre part one, how to chaos, cause chaos in one click. Take notes. License is everything. That's how it started. Mapbox did this little GitHub diff, added a few lines here and there. The community said, holy moly, we need to do something. I was one of that community. Basically, I tweeted, time to fork. I'm sorry, we love Mapbox, but time to fork. Because everyone was using Mapbox GeoGS. It was just like de facto. There's nothing better at the time. Open layers are cool, though. The, the, just, they just have slightly different target audience. Eight minutes later, the only reply is from the CEO of Mapbox. No, 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 don't fork, basically. Well, no, they, he didn't say that. He was actually very, very cool, very friendly. and trying to say, like, we would still love people to look at our code and participate in our, in our ecosystem as long as you pay for Mapbox services. We said, thank you. We need to fork. Luke from Stadia Map contacted me immediately on Twitter as well. He's like, yes, 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 let's do it, let's organize. Very next day, Peter, right there, Peter waved to everyone. Yes, he like, okay, time to organize. I'll send out the email. And we got the whole business -y and got together and discussed it. And we had a proper meeting notes and summary. And we like felt like adults all of a sudden. And we produced a memorandum of understanding. And essentially, that's when MapLibre was born. Who are we now? As of yesterday, very late at 2 AM, when I was making these slides, we were getting over 91,000 downloads per week. Some CI jobs are really busy. And that's just the GLGS part. There's also native part. 
lots of forks, three and a half thousand stars. I mean, that for a project that's been running since December, so that's like a year and a half, basically. Quite impressive, I would say. I mean, I guess we were just there at the right time because like, it was perfect storm type of thing. We have a lot of different projects. Most of them are plugins or code that's not maintained by the original authors, and we had to kind of pick up the slack and start developing it and supporting it. We, as I said already, officially have official governance and a charter and really feel like adults now with a proper board of five people that got elected by the community. Um, we have a number of steering committees. This technical steering committee side is actually slightly outdated. There's more people there and we actually now have more or less two official technical steering committees, one for the GLGS and related and the other is for native because those, even though they're kind of about the same thing, but they do it in a completely different way. So, keep them separate. We have proper sponsors. Facebook has donated 80,000 to us. Uh, Amazon has promised uh, to become a platinum sponsor. Like within days, it's like all pretty much signed and everything. So we want to really thank the big supporters for really giving us big grants to give away to the community to support this effort. And the way I see Map, Map Libre, the organization, is mostly coordinating and making sure that people don't fight too much but actually try to get to the common goals. At the end of the day, that's, that's what we all want, to, to get together and move forward instead of just uh, being issue locked and uh, debate locked and whatever. A huge number of individual supporters made a lot of the, in, uh, small donations, but I mean, you know, sometimes percentage-wise to the income, those, it's much more significant contributions than the large donations from lar larger companies. Simply because like, people really feel MapLibre is doing something right. We have a big community pretty much everywhere in the world. Uh, I think this, even this slide is outdated now. It's way more than 80 code contributors now. And now I go to the vision. This is mostly my vision that is mostly in part shared by other MapLibre contributors. So there's a little bit of a mixture there. One stack in the sense that we need to go, we need to do, uh, provide tooling for all the steps of the way. You have raw data, open street maps, natural earth, wiki data, to name that's just the well-known ones, but I mean, custom data, my personal user uh, data, uh, data in some obscure CSV file that I really want to merge in and too busy to convert to any other format. We want to support those so that we need to generate data. And Planet Tyler has expressed interest in joining our efforts once they really stabilize the code base and make it about tooling without any specifics of the, which schema you're gonna use. Surf tiles, you need to be able to innovate you know, multiple parts of the stack. What if you wanted some addition, what if you, we wanted to do dynamic zooming? Because you know, some, peop, some areas of the earth are slightly more populated than the other. So we kind of want to be able to zoom in and see the little details, whereas ocean is pretty much ocean everywhere and you really don't need zoom 20 at those locations, usually. Unless you're doing like pictures of the waves and they're all different. Um, Rendering, that's the core value. That's what everyone is expecting from MapLibre. JavaScript, native, maybe eventually we'll throw both of them out and actually join the efforts and build it in Rust so we can compile it to WebAssembly, to all the native targets. But this is like a northern star. This is really far out. We have no idea if we will be successful at this effort. So this is just like really an experimental stage at this point, even though Max, who is right there on his phone, wave. <laughs> He is the one who actually got, gotten that project started and really implemented a lot of show code targeting all these platforms. So one code to fit them all. And extras, plugins, new standards. What if we want point clouds in the system? We want to innovate in multiple parts of the stack and really get them quickly into all pieces of the code. Because otherwise, if we have to implement an app Libre, but in order for it to work, we have to wait for ISO to standardize something 10 years in the, in the future, it's not going to happen. So let's boldly change it. Harel, who jumped on MapLibre 
pretty early on, decided to do a pull request. 30,000 lines. We all love those, right? Especially to review those. He's like, that's in JavaScript. I don't like JavaScript. How about we switch to TypeScript? Mapbox came, well, some people from Mapbox were like, can we do that too, please? Can we copy it? I mean, we love our JavaScript code, but we really could use TypeScript right about yesterday. So that one pull request really rewrote most of the code, not the structure of the code, but just like the usability of the code, the documentation of the code, because it also changed the, the, from the antiquated, what was it, JS flow and the types. I have never heard of it even of a JS flow before I saw that. And he like single-handedly, well, not single, there was a, a lot of community support for his efforts, but he was really it was the driving force behind it. Oh, and we got rid of IE. That's like the, the, the theme of pretty much every uh, modern repo. First thing we do is, because Open Layers just announced that they're like, we just shrunk our code by like five megabytes. Getting rid of IE was so easy. Just, oh, now switch to uh, pro uh, proper just unit testing. We got 3D in. Let's see if it works. Ooh. So uh, we got this feature in. This is something that uh, we're very proud of. It's uh, a company. No, but mostly it uh, was Max and Peter from, I keep forgetting the company's name. Please do forgive me. Let's con but they've really implemented all this functionality and contributed to MapLibre. And so now you can do this. It's not fully, fully baked. It works in majority of the cases, but we still consider it a beta feature simply because there are some visualization bugs. Like, for example, some of the really nearby tiles do not load when they should be. So like minor mathematical fixes. If you know anything about 3D or just really want to work on a cool project, well, talk to one of us. This is our roadmap. Switch to TypeScript, we did that. The 3D, we did that. Uh, we got the whole community governance and voting in place and the charter in place. That was prob probably actually took way more effort than I was anticipating, but we got it through. And it's now it's, it's a proper system. So we now can innovate and move forward into more interesting features. It has been spotted in the wild. One of them is Elastic. Shameless plug. I uh, work for Elastic. Uh, very um, elastic search, Kibana, etc. Our dashboards allow, basically, use MapLibre as well uh, to generate, uh, to to visualize all the mapping, and we're very happy with it. When we were one of the first large companies to migrate to MapLibre when the switch happened. Another example of that, uh, one even better example is probably even this. It's uh, Map. Um, uh, Elasticsearch and Kibana support uh, hex styles, so you can generate hex styles and view them, you view your data as hexes, all thanks to MapLibre flexibility. And just uh, moving right along. Oop. There's another. That's not us. That's actually a community project to visualize ma uh, weather maps. Again, on a native device. So this is not MapLibre GLGS. It's a MapLibre native. On running on uh, Android, I believe, uh, with uh, Geo Native Qt and uh, visualizing weather. Whoops, too far. Aspirations. So, where we're we going? How we're we doing it? And what is our roadmap in more details? Uh, we got the whole community shtick, the testing. We need way more testing in native world. Native is lagging behind because, believe it or not, Larger companies are more interested in native. Smaller companies and individuals love brow browsers for some reason. So the browsers have a very good up-to-date ecosystem. Native needs some hand-holding and finance, and which is, I mean, totally fine. You, you, whenever you have two projects trying to do the same thing from different angles, one of them will always lag. And uh, so there's a lot of effort and a lot of focus on it for us to get native up to the same standards and feature parity. We do want to work with other ecosystems. Like, for example, there is a Leaflet plugin for MapLibre. There is um, hope for one day we'll 
do the globe. You know, everyone loves the globe. We all love Mer Web Mercator. It's by far the best system. We, we can agree on that. But when you zoom out, Web Mercator kind of looks bad, especially in the polar regions. So um, if we can morph it into a globe the way a number of other companies do, we would love that same functionality. If you know how to do this, and I mean, all the mathematics has been published for a long time, and it's, it's just, it's a matter of like, well, let's just get our hands together and do it. We all want that, so that's one of them. Uh, custom coordinate system, basically. It's a single code, ba uh, code base. That's the thing I was talking about with Rust. Maybe someday we can join all the code into a single code base. I mean, maybe it will be native, actually. A native compiled to WebAssembly will solve all these problems. I don't hold my breath on that, but it could be done. So we, we are looking to fi hire full-time staff or, like, or at least like contractors with considerable time dedicated to MapLibre because some of the features are cool and fun to work on and some are less so. So those that are less so should be sponsored, should be paid for because since no one wants to do them, we, might as we will have to spend some money and really employ people to do them, like, I don't know, issue shepherding and pull request replying and whatever, like all these things that any grown product should do. We need to turn it into a sphere, just as I said. I mean, flat earth, there's too many flat earthers otherwise. And uh, font support, uh, right now there's like just very simple fonts that are being supported, but we need really complex ones. Like my, my favorite one is the, the very first, that's the, uh, the language used in Myanmar, uh, what is it? I forgot the name of the language. Uh, but this is an extremely complex font, complex, font, complex font to render because it's, it's not individual letters. Each next letter basically morphs the previous one into one giant hairball. And uh, that, the very, very few, um, I think on the Harpas, I think that's the name of the library in C++ that really knows how to deal with all that. And there's maplibre.org is where you go and participate and look at the documentation and just wave at us there or at GitHub. And to that, I thank you. Oh, you want this picture? <laughs>